Hey guys, it's Jean-Claude, and with a staggering amount of the votes, Baroness right here beat out Might Flag. We're going to see what deck it has to compete against after this. Let's see what this thing has. These three houses were, well, probably my favorite three houses in Coda, so I have some very high hopes for this thing. Obviously, Mass Mutations is a lot different, but at the same time, Logos, I think... I would like to say it's the most consistent house between every single set. It kind of does the same sort of thing, whereas I feel like some of the other houses have kind of changed over time. Logos is still super strong, so I look forward to seeing what this deck brings. Starting off with Untamed. Oh, this means we have Dark Harbinger, Mutation of Cunning, Amber Nevy play it. Until the start of your next turn, a creature gains Elusive and the Mutant trait. Vault's Blessing, Amber and Heavy Plate. Each player gains Amber for each mutant creature they control. Well, we know we have at least one thanks to Dark Harbinger, right? Oh, a second Vault's Blessing. Please, 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 please give us a mutant deck. Niffle Grounds, it's an artifact. Amber and Heavy Plate, action. Choose a creature. For the remainder of the turn, that creature loses Taunt and Elusive. There's that Dark Harbinger with a... Wait, with an Amber Pip. Dark Harbinger normally doesn't come with an Amber Pip, right? I'm pretty sure that's enhanced. As a matter of fact, it has to be enhanced. Four power, after you play an untamed action card, ready Dark Harbinger. Well, we have three so far. Savage Clash, destroy each creature except the most powerful enemy creature and the least powerful friendly creature. Great card. Key Frog, two power, destroyed, forge a key at current cost. Gloriana's Attendant, one power, enhanced, two Amber Pips. Ghost Hawk, two power, deploy. Play you may reap with each neighboring creature one at a time. Okay, I'm liking the looks of this untamed so far, but let's finish out with some good actions, please. Flume, three power skirmish, fight, give a beast creature two plus one power counters. Dark Fairy, two power skirmish, fight, gain two amber. Wow, really good. Cephaloist, four power, while you have four more amber, your amber cannot be stolen. Okay, and that ends the untamed. Looked pretty good, great creatures, great effects, a board wipe. Potential for some big amber there, can't really complain about that. Imperial Trader, amber whenever you play it. Look at your opponent's hand, you may choose and purge a sanctum card from it. Doom Sigil, it's an artifact. Each creature gains poison. If there are no creatures in play, destroy Doom Sigil. Hold up, wait a minute. This is interesting to me simply because we only have two skirmish, right? Yeah, we have two skirmish creatures, and giving them poison means they're more likely to survive, right? This is meant to be where each creature kind of eliminates itself thanks to the poison, fighting back and forth, but if our creatures don't take damage back, that could give us a great way to control the board. Very interesting. Oh, another skirmish creature, Macus Asp. Three power, this one already had poison on its own, but I do like seeing the skirmish in here because of that card. Lights out, Amber Nevy played with the capture pip, return two enemy creatures to the owner's hands. Great. Oh, another lights out. Normal. Tempting offer. Amber and heavy plate enhanced to capture pip. Return an enemy creature to its owner's hand. If you do, your opponent gains an amber. Hmm, a lot of tempo in this thing. Liking it. <laughs> okay. Another tempting offer. We do not want our opponent to have any other creatures on the board. Shoulder id with the damage pip. Six power taunt. Cannot fight. If it would deal damage, steal an amber instead. Opportunist. It's an upgrade. Amber and heavy plate. This creature gains elusive. Whenever you play it, this creature captures an amber from its opponent. Another one of those. Okay, helps keep creatures around, so they just can't use the poison to get rid of our board. Ganji, two power elusive. Reap, if your opponent has more amber than you, you get to steal one. Bow, nothing, two power. Play, steal an amber for each forged key your opponent has. And now we're on to Logos. Okay, it's a very interesting deck. Lots of great cards. Shadows was okay, but I guess we're going to really have to go back and see if there was any mutants. I don't recall. Maybe one? No, the it is a specter. Uh-oh, there's no mutants in the shadows. That's a shame because we have those two vault blessings. Come on, Logos. Give us some mutants. Master of the Theory, Amber W. Play it. If there are no friendly creatures in play, you may archive a card for each enemy creature. This could be an interesting card after the Savage Clash, right? We play it. We're down to maybe one creature or a couple. Our opponent then repopulates the board. Following turn, call Logos, maybe archive a good amount of our hand. Neuro Siphon, Amber W. Play it. If your opponent has more Amber than you, you steal one and draw a card. Mutagenic Serum, where are the mutants? It's an artifact. Amber W. Play it. Omni, destroy it. You may use friendly mutant creatures this turn. This is not even a mutant. Titan Engineer, six power while it is not on a flank. Keys cost plus one amber. Okay, good. Always like key cost increases. Standardized testing, destroy each creature with the lowest power and each creature with the highest power. Cumex, one power, play, draw a card. Destroyed, archive Cumex. Opposition research, enhance the damage pip. Enemy creatures cannot reap during your opponent's next turn. Munchling, with the capture pip. Three power skirmish, fight. You may discard a Logos card from your hand or archives. If you do, gain an amber. Everett's in principle with an amber pip. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
Uh, we're gonna get that amber and basically just lose it. Well, at least I guess 50% of the time. Each player loses half their amber, rounding down the loss, gain one chain. Eclectic Inquiry, Amber Devy Plate, archive the top two cards of your deck, and the, oh, not the final card, Diametric Charge, Amber Devy Plate, deal one damage to a creature with a two damage splash, and now the last card is a daughter, two power elusive. During your draw card step, refill your hand to one additional card. Wow, I feel like this might be the worst Vault Blessings deck of all time, because just taking a stab at it, I'm going to guess there's like less than six? We'll have to see how many mutant creatures we have whenever we get to the creature side of things. You know what? I'm not even going to pull up the reference in principle because I'm not really going to rely on that amber for anything. So, hmm, what is going to happen with this deck? Actually, I won't even pull up the bow nithing with amber for now. We'll definitely put up with amber control, though. Okay, oh, that doesn't have an amber on it. Okay, a lot of artifacts typically do. Ghost Talk we can count for typically two, especially in a creature heavy deck, which I feel like we had a decent amount of those. Dark Harbinger is nice. Okay, so we have one. Hmm. I guess we'll say two, three. Definitely better if we're playing against a non-mass mutations deck. So I guess five, six, seven, possibly eight, depending on how many actions we have. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. That's a really high number, but to be fair, some of these might have been a little bit less. I will say 19 is very, very reliable there. That's a very interesting number to see either way. So let's get up our Amber Control. Oh wait, one of these had a, there it is, a Capture Pip. Gotta watch for those. Okay, Neuro Siphon is definitely some Amber Control. I like that card more than the average player. I don't mind holding on to it sometimes just to make sure I can get the steal. Especially because you can typically plot out how the first few turns of a game are going to go. Or rather, the next few turns after you've drawn the card. It doesn't have to be uh, right away. So it's still pretty good, at least in my opinion. Okay, so for Amber Control, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, I... Don't even know if I want to call that a full eight either. Kind of like the amber, some of it is very inconsistent. Eight amber control cards, but I'm not expecting it to play like eight amber control cards in most decks. Bringing up the creatures now. That's kind of the beauty of Keyforge. Some of these like raw numbers you look at doesn't really tell you how the deck's gonna play out. It's sometimes a little bit tricky and you gotta see past it. Hmm, okay, let's hope we hit a pocket of creatures here. Uh-oh. I know we had a decent amount right here in Untamed. Oh boy. One, five, ten, fifteen. Oh no, it's only fifteen? Tell me I missed some. I did not. Oh, fifteen is a little bit rough. I knew all of the amber was gonna come at a cost. Now, I wouldn't complain as much if the fifteen creatures were bigger creatures, because that means they would be more likely to survive. But all of these small creatures is going to be sort of a problem. But then again, I guess let's kind of look at the board control again, just to get a much better picture of all this. Like these returning, it's just going to slow our opponent down, doesn't necessarily get rid of the creatures. So that's kind of a shame. Ooh, Master of the Theory is a little bit better since we don't have as many creatures. We're not really going to pull that up for board control though. Oh gosh, how many mutants do we have for that serum? That's going to be the very next thing we check. Let's see, standardized testing, the Doom Sigil, and the Savage Clash. I guess this Doom Sigil is actually a lot better than it would be in most decks, because since we do have these smaller creatures, we typically wouldn't be able to take care of our opponent's bigger creatures without a board wipe, but now this does make our smaller creatures into killers. So thank you, Doom Sigil, very much for being in this deck. So if you kind of look at this, there's a lot of different things dealing with opponent's creatures, but honestly, these three up top are by far the most important ones. Doing the piddly damage or just returning them, not so much. All right, all right, let's see how many mutants are in here. This is the moment of truth. Okay, that's a beast. There's one, two, three, come on, four, oh no, oh no, oh, okay, five, I said less than six, okay, it's five, oh my gosh. <laughs> A double Vault Blessing deck, and we have five mutants. Oh, 
So much pain there. Hold on. We're at least the majority of those in Untamed. Oh, thank goodness. You know what? For an Untamed, at least allows us to, once again, in a non-mass mutation match, allow us to at least drop those down, combine them with the Vault's Blessing, since they're at least in Untamed. Let us get the Amber immediately, because look at these. Overall, smaller creatures, two fours, a two, and a one. So I hope those kind of line up, but once again, against other non-mass mutation decks. Actually, it would be kind of cool. These are all in the same house. I pulled it up. Here we go. Savage Clash beforehand. Maybe it leaves your opponent with one mutant. Maybe it doesn't. Then drop down maybe two mutants or three mutants and a Vault's Blessing or two Vault Blessings. That'd be pretty nice. Get like two Amber right off that. That'd be pretty cool. Well, plus it even comes with an Amber, so it could be a three Amber Burst. Not really going to count on that, though. Oh, something else, actually. Key Frog in combination with that, if it was already out, could get us potentially a Key Forged immediately that turn. The cards in this deck, overall, pretty good. I like a lot of them. I don't think this is a really powerful deck. If it would have had some better steel, I definitely would have said that this deck was in the A category. But as it stands, I see a lot of problems with this deck. There was no artifact control, amber control lower. I said creatures that didn't have much survivability, meaning we won't even have the option most of the time to be able to fight and destroy our opponent's board or reap with them because there's a good chance if our opponent has a bigger board deck that they're just going to be able to eliminate our creatures while also gaining amber with their other creatures or just cards from their hand. A huge amber count isn't everything in Keyforge unless you have really huge burst combined with fortune keys that key frog takes some setup whereas in the past like chota hasri and key charge they were instant we didn't have to have that setup i don't have to have that key frog on the board combined with the savage clash or already have it on the board and fight into an opponent's creature to try and get that key forged there was a potential for a lot of archive in here but it really only came from two cards the eclectic inquiry made random cards so we can't really set up certain things and the master of the theory that's questionable just how many cards it gets to archive every game it's going to be a very inconsistent card What's funny is this deck does shine against like Fangtooth Cavern decks and Quizzlestone decks because honestly we don't have to play the creatures. Alright, so let's see what the final matchup is going to be. We got Might Flag here. And inside this one, let's see. Untamed Shadow Sorion. I want to see something completely different. Maybe three different houses. Alright, oh, it's a yellow Archon. Oh boy. Gonna be very hard to compare those, at least the pictures on camera. This is the first house. Second house is Shadows. And the third, come on, give us something. Oh, we already had Shadows, so it already has some of the same. Oh, it has Logos again. Victory, Jagia, Call. And that is a cool looking Archon there. It's got like uh, either legs or arms down below. Got maybe some eyes right here. You say it's a close up on like the head sort of thing with a big old headdress. Or. You could say maybe that's like a floating ship of some sort, right? Got some nets there to prevent people from falling out. All right, guys. Might Flag of the Watcher Swamp or Victory Jagia Call. Which one do you want to see in the very next video? Let me know down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching my videos, and I'll see you next time.